Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is the only standard for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, it's such a blessing and a joy to have you here with us this morning as we look into the Word of God. Now, I want to talk to you about a very practical issue today. Today is, of course, September the 19th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, as I stated, I want to talk to you about something very practical this morning, but is often overlooked, especially the importance of it. And so as we approach this topic, let's look in our Bibles and let's take our text from Acts chapter 2 and verse 46, where we read, And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Now, I want to couple that with chapter 5 in the book of Acts, verse 42, which says, And daily in the temple and in every house, They ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Now, friends, I hope that you gathered what we're going to discuss this morning out of that text. You see, they went to the temple. They went to the synagogue of the Jews to convert the Jews, to tell the Jews that their long-awaited promised Messiah had come. And they had killed him and hung him upon a cross. And so they wanted to show them Jesus through and out of the Old Testament. And every page shows Jesus, every story is a sign of Jesus through the Old Testament. We only need to know what we're looking for in order to see Jesus. For instance, when Moses raised the serpent on the pole and all the people would look to see their healing from all the snake bites that were taking place in that story, That is a symbol, a sign of Jesus to come. Now, one would ask, well, a serpent on a pole, how does that resemble Jesus? Well, Jesus isn't the serpent. The sin is the serpent. The serpent represents the sin, the will and desire of man to do what he wants to do instead of doing what God wants him to do. And Jesus came to take victory over that sin to give men new hearts so that they no longer have the desire to do what they want to do, but now they have the desire born from their hearts to do what God wants them to do. But more importantly, they didn't spend their time in the synagogue, in the temple. They went from house to house. And so what this does, this tells us that the early formation of the body of Christ, or what has become known as the church, took place in the homes. It wasn't a building that had been erected, costing sometimes millions of dollars, which could go to feed the hungry and care for the poor and the homeless. Instead of building these large institutions, they met in one another's homes. There was no overhead. There was no cost involved. So any money that came into the fellowship, into the body of Christ, that money was dispersed to be better used to help those who needed it the most. But today, what has the church become? It has become these mass erections of man's pride to cater to the fancies of what men would want. But my purpose this morning isn't to attack the church, although it is, it is deserving of much attack. My effort this morning, my desire this morning is to encourage you of the importance of a home fellowship. You see, when you're sitting in a congregation and the man is preaching from the pulpit and you're out there as part of an audience, a large audience, you can't raise your hand and say, wait a minute, I've got a question about something you just asked because you would be considered disrupting the service. But in a home fellowship, there is no such disruption, especially in a one-in-one teaching environment. You can pose and ask all the questions you want. And you should do that. You have a right to do that. Because the only way to get to the truth 
is to break through all the doubt. And the doubt is the questions. Look, you may tell me this, Pastor, but it doesn't make sense to me. So explain it to me so that I can understand it. And so instead of spending an hour having an overview of a specific topic, you can break down a single verse into an hour's lesson, dissecting and diagnosing exactly what that means, looking into other passages of the Bible. Now, while there are many pastors who endeavor to do this in their Sunday morning meetings, for instance, there's still many that are leaving the church every single Sunday with more questions than answers. And that's the beauty of a local fellowship. Now, I say that to say this. First of all, you need to be involved in a local fellowship, in a local body of believers, in a home environment where you can pose questions and get the answers you are seeking. But even more than that, and you're not going to like this, but I don't care what age in Christ you are. I don't care how new a believer you are. You have truth to give to others. And so you should be teaching in a home fellowship. You should be offering that to others. Now you may say, Pastor, wait a minute. I'm not ready for that. I don't know anything about it. That's okay. You know enough. You probably know more than the majority. So take your Bible, open your Bible, sit down, go word for word, and simply talk about what it is you are reading and how it applies to our lives. Now that brings up a very important topic because there are many people that you can talk to and they'll say, well, yeah, but the problem with the Bible is, is you read it and you get one thing out of it and I read it and I get another thing out of it. Well, that is true only in the case that people apply the Bible to cater to their own lives. In other words, they read the Bible and they try to form the Bible to say what they want it to say so that their conscience doesn't prick them and they can live comfortably in the situation they're living in, feeling no remorse before God for the decisions that they're making. But friends, that's not true of the Bible because the Bible means the same thing to every single person. It applies to each of us differently because we are at different places in our journeys. But it only means one thing when it says what it means. In other words, when it says, thou shalt not steal, it simply means do not take what does not belong to you under any circumstances. But you may have someone who reads that and they apply it to their taxes. You may have someone else who reads that and they apply it to being broke and homeless and not stealing to survive. But it still means the same thing. It doesn't matter how it applies, and it applies differently to everyone who reads it because it depends on where we are in our journey. But it means the same thing. Do not take what does not belong to you. And that is true about every other area, every other aspect of the Bible. And so I want to end this morning by, with great love, making you feel guilty for not doing what you have been called to do. You, you don't have to go to Bible college to be a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have been born into the kingdom of God, you are a minister. You are responsible to teach others. So friends, seek them out. Find people who want to learn. Find people who want to know. And even though you don't know all that you want to know, still teach them what you do know. And as you begin to study and prepare for these times together, your knowledge will increase along with theirs because you're in the Word of God and you're studying it and you're going back to the very beginning of the formation of the early Christian faith and you're doing exactly what they did. So you're in good company. Just sit down with one another and hash these things out. Talk about prevalent issues that are going on in the world and how God sees them, how we see them, and how we need to change our views so that we can live according to God's views and God's rules. I love you, friends. I hope you accept this with the love that is offered from it and at the same time 
the rebuke that is offered with it. Because if you're a child of the living God and you're not teaching others, then you are neglecting your God-given duty and he will hold you accountable and responsible for not doing so. Well, now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I do truly love you, and I offer you this word of exhortation, encouragement, and rebuke from a sincere place in my heart. I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.